67 millimeters. That's the magic number we are working with here today. I got my hands on two additional coolers. Let's check it out with the 7800X 3D. Welcome to Machines and More. So as I found out after the previous video on the 7800X 3D, Fortunately, the Big Shuriken 3 is no longer available, so there is something else in the works, but you can't get this cooler from most retail channels now. So if you were looking for something in that 67 millimeter height range, you gotta look elsewhere. Fortunately, you have options, and today we'll take a quick look at two more that, you, as you'll see, will work just fine with the 7800X 3 First one is Thermal Rights AXP120 x67 the other one is id cooling's is 67 xt so these tested coolers they were provided as test samples by the manufacturers at no cost to the channel big thanks to both thermal right and id cooling full disclosure i'm not paid by either of the manufacturers for this review and you can expect a fair and well-researched comparison here today okay so in plenty of itx cases the 67 millimeter number is a good height uh, to shoot for for example, if you're air cooling the SUP Mesh Licious or the Ghost S1, yeah, it's a good number. In the form T1V2 or Terra, uh, pa paired with a two and a quarter slot thick card, you can also fit 67 millimeters. So these two should be quite useful for your ITX builds. The Thermal Right AXP 120X67, it's a 67 millimeter tall cooler. You got six heat pipes with this one. It is a nickel plated copper base plate. And in addition to the bare metal version that they have here with a non ARGB fan, they also have a white and a black version that uses a different fan. It's non RGB. It's a slim 120 millimeter fan. And this, uh, according to the documentation, can go up to 1800 RPM plus or minus 10%. This one got up to 2040 RPM though, so based on that spec, it's a little bit faster, but you know, it's not a big deal. Compatible with AM4, AM5, LGA 11.5X, 1200, 1700. Uh, on AM4, AM5, which is a topic in question today, you can mount it with heat pipe tips facing the rear I.O. where there's not going to be any RAM interference, or you can mount it with a, you know, heat pipes facing in. Now this heat sink is fairly sculpted away where that overlap is as well. So you have around 36 millimeters under the heatsink anyway. So it'll still work with plenty of kits if you're forced into that mode. But since I don't have a restriction on the rear O side, I opted to test with the no RAM interference mode. Uh, there's not really a meaningful point to overlap it and both orientations, they sit quite well on the MSI B650i motherboard. So we'll just test the no RAM interference way because I think most of you will want to run it that way. It does sit quite close to the top edge of the motherboard. In the inverted layout of the Fractal Terra, that also means it's quite close to the bottom of the case. So it's nearly impossible to access the uh, obscured fan clip that way. So if you're mounting in a case like this, my advice would be to mount the fan to the heatsink and then attach the cable to the motherboard and then make sure that all the cables that you need to access, like the EPS cable, those are all connected already and then mount this together. The design of this fan, it does make it very easy. Uh, you can access the uh, mounting points through the fan. Otherwise, the install, it's not very complicated and it goes together well. The build quality, it's, it's pretty good. And they also include a set of fan clips if you have the space and choose to use a regular thickness 120 millimeter fan. Next up is ID Cooling's new IS67, which comes in black like I've mounted in the case or white here. So you can choose the aesthetic for your build. And unlike the IS55, which we looked at in that previous 7800X 3D cooling video, this one comes with a non RGB fan and also has six heat pipes with a nickel plated copper base plate and they're doing something new which I really like and it comes down to how they've packaged the cooler spacers and hardware it's a neat little plastic uh, compartment box it's a little thing but it makes it so easy for you know for, for you to identify these things um, you've got different spacers the red ones I already took out and, and mount in but for team red you have the red spacers and you break them off uh, it's actually kind of fun <laughs> and for AM4 AM5 you have the decision to make. You can install it with the longer bars and the heat fins that it will run horizontally at that point. Uh, this one is a little bit awkward since it does put that heat pipe bend at the top or the bottom of your motherboard. However, the shorter bars, they make more sense and you will have fins running vertically at that point, similar to the AXP120. When you have the heat pipes facing the rear IO, you don't have any RAM interference. 
If you choose to flip it 180 degrees facing the RAM, you do have a similar amount of space under the heat sink. That's like 36 millimeters or so. So most uh, low profile kits, no problem there. They do also include a rudimentary screwdriver for expedience, which is nice if you don't have one handy. And the fan attaches to the heat sink with screws, which is convenient too. I do like that more than messing with fan clips. You also get a longer set of screws for a regular thickness fan as well. The fan, it spins up a little bit faster here, 2200 RPM here. You won't want to run it this fast, especially in the Terra. And what I did notice was that both of these coolers also have an acoustic interference uh, from the Fractal Terra side panel. So if you are using this case, do take note, it's a little bit too close. So unfortunately that side panel does amplify the sound quite a bit, but I wanted to match the noise level from the Big Shuriken 3 in the Fractal Terra to test these two coolers. So this is a noise normalized test with the panel closed. These tests here utilize a blender render and I do have the CPU running on PBO, both with a curve optimized and frequency boosted setting, as well as an out of the box setting here. So I think this may give the general user a better picture of which cooler performs better. I could also lock the voltage down like I've done in the past and just compare the temps, but you know, that's not actually how are you going to be running Ryzen 7000? That's not going to be the way most users choose to run the CPU. So if you're if you're going to want you're going to want to use a curve optimizer. So this is a good way to test too. So for the out of the box test with the render, both these coolers they do beat out the Big Shuriken 3 and uh, the IS67. It just edges out the AXP120 here. There's not a huge difference one second, but um, it's there. When allowed to boost higher end with a curve optimizer shutting of minus 30. Interesting, we still have around the same margins. Uh, both of these coolers do seem to get more out of the 7800X 3D's boost algorithm than the Big Shuriken 3. Let's look at the thermals. Uh, they're absolutely not meaningful here because the boost algorithm, it's not going to be running these uh, the CPU at the same power level depending on the cooler it's getting. So um, it can vary based on a variety of factors, but just for reference here, both of these coolers, they end up with the CPU a bit hotter. And that's not to say that the thermal performance isn't good because the amount of power the CPU is getting when we test this way, it's gonna vary based on how good that cooler is. And the CPU is actually getting quite a bit more with both of these coolers. It's given the IS67 XT the most power here. Presumably it's more effective at drawing away the heat from the CPU. So the CPU is willing to give more power and boost higher for longer with the better coolers. So. Both of these are mighty impressive and the IS67 does seem to be the best performer out of the bunch here by a little bit. One thing to watch out for is the acoustics. Uh, like I mentioned, unfortunately for this height and proximity of the fan to the Fractal Terra side panel, both these coolers have a bit of added noise from the side panel. So let's just hit, uh, take a quick listen at the fan noise for reference. Fan is 75%. IS67 to test the noise interval. I've got the unit's 1800 RPM panel open. Panel close. You can definitely hear it pick up the sound quite a bit. As a reference at the max speed for the thermal right cooler, the closing the side panel added about four decibels. The higher the fan speed, the greater the magnification here. So if you are a Fractal Terra user, if you can limit it to around about 70% PWM with this CPU, I think it'll work just fine. Uh, the, uh, you know, the side panel noise, it won't be as pronounced. And for reference, the IS67's noise normalized fan PWM was 77%. So yeah, both are excellent choices for the 7800X 3D. Very important aspect here is how well the heatsink is able to conduct heat away from the CPU, and both of these appear to be top tier. If I was forced to pick one, then I would go with the IS67. That's not necessarily because of the performance aspect. I just think that uh, you know the installation, the packaging experience, little things like this is just that little bit better, especially for a first time builder. You have less things to worry about. You have more mounting positions with that one. And that little performance bump is just icing, but a very, very, very thin layer of icing. So 
It's about $40 before any promotions. The AXP120 from the Thermalright Amazon storefront, it's uh, $43 or so right now. So they're pretty similarly priced. Uh, Thermalright does have that white or black version, which is priced a lot lower, but that will be a different ARGB fan. So the performance characteristics, they're likely to be different there. I haven't tested that version, but yeah, it may work uh, just fine as well. So thanks for checking these out with me. I'll leave the links down below, so please check these out. Both are great coolers. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.